a non-food pantry is a collection of non-food items, right, um, that you can stock up to help you get through an emergency, a disaster, um, financial crisis, whatever the case may be, to make you and yours a little more comfortable and a little more safe. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sutton's Days. If you're new here, my name is Lisa, and we are all about pantry preparedness, even the non-foods. There are many reasons my, why you might want to stock a non-food pantry. Uh, if you live in an area that is prone to natural disasters, such as hurricanes or tornadoes, a non-food pantry can help you and your family survive if you are forced to evacuate your home. Even if you don't live in an area that is prone to natural disasters, a non-food pantry can be helpful if there is a power outage or other emergency that makes it difficult to get to the store. There are many ways to stock a non-food pantry, and there are different ways for every person because you're going to be stocking things completely different from what I stock up on, okay? If you can see my non-food area of my pantry behind me, um, my priority has always been the things that I use the most of the most frequently. So that is laundry soap, that is dishwasher detergent, that is dish soap, deodorant, toothpaste, toothbrushes, toilet paper, hello, and paper towels. Um, I also do stock up on parchment paper, on plastic wrap, and on tinfoil because, well, you can never have enough hats, right? These are all the things that I buy in bulk and I stock up on my shelves. You can do it piece by piece, or if you have a little more money, you can stock up, you know, pick one item a month to stock up on. Make sure it's something that you use. Make sure it's the things that you use, right? You want to focus on things that will help you in case of a natural disaster, uh, that will help you in case of an emergency, that will be there to help you get through any kind of financial or medical emergency, right? You want to make sure that you're stocking up on things you genuinely use, not things that you think that you like. The best way to determine what these are is to make a list. So before you purchase a single thing, make a list. I use toothbrush. I use toothpaste. I use deodorant. I use shampoo. I use conditioner. I use body wash and or soap. I use laundry detergent. I use dish soap. I use dishwasher soap. Um, Q-tips. Paper plates. Tin foil parchment paper, plastic wrap, you know, there's a multitude of things out there. And a lot of us will not use the same things. A lot of people have a real issue with me using paper plates. Luckily, they don't live here. Um, paper plates for us work. They just work. Because with just the two of us and my wonky eating schedule, most of the time a paper plate is just easier than having something to wash. It can be used to start fires uh, we burn it, you know, there's, there's no worry about any of that. So it, it just works for our lifestyle. If it doesn't work for yours, don't use it, right? Where can I store it? Now, as you know, I have my pantry. I have a room that I have converted to be a pantry. If you do not have that kind of room, then you're looking for similar to what you do for your food. You want a cool, dry, dark place. Cool, dry, and dark. Those are the optimal situation for just about anything that you want to store. If you don't have room for that, then yes, your laundry soap can go in the garage. Yes, your dishwasher soap can go in the garage. Would I store paper products in the garage? Not so much. But, I mean, we're in the country and mice are a reality. So I do everything I can to not feed them or help them nest. If you don't have that kind of problem or if you want to put them into something, mice are not going to search out toilet paper the way that they will peanut butter, okay? Because they can't eat it. They will. I'm not saying they won't, but they will. Um, but it's not what they're searching out. So if you want to fill uh, buckets or Rubbermaid totes or trash cans, you know, with that kind of thing, just make sure nobody takes it to the curb on you. That would suck. A while back, I'll link the video, I did a major Sam's Club haul. And I spent almost $1,000 on a lot of the stuff that you see behind me. And so it was trash bags. Paper towels, paper plates, laundry detergent, dish soap. I mean, you you name it. I ran the gamut on it, right? And that was my, my intention was to build up a three-year stock. So the other day, I'm like, okay, I'm not remembering seeing trash bags. This is why your inventory is so important. Um, because things kind of got away from me in here. And I knew that we had one box left that was open because half of it had been used the other half of it, I was going to have to pull out very shortly to replace that. And I'm like, 
I should have a whole bunch more. I mean, I kind of figured two boxes was more than a year's worth of trash bags. And I don't remember how many I bought, but I can look at my Excel spreadsheet because I kept track of it. And I went and without looking and without digging deeper before I did my inventory, I went and I ordered more trash bags. Trash bags have gone up $3 a box for the kind that I buy from Sam's Club. Um, and I just buy the stretchable kitchen trash bags, no name, you know, members mark, whatever it is. They went up $3. Yes, they did. So then I said, okay, let's do this. I came in here. I started working on the pantry and I started moving stuff around. And what do I find? I found six more boxes of trash bags. So I now have um, six years worth of trash bags in my pantry. I'm making a note of that so that I do not buy them again. I reorganized in here um, because during 2020, 2021, 2022, uh, you know, things kind of got moved, shuffled, shovel, you know, shoveled around depending on what was going on and what was my focus and priority at the time. And now I've had to do that again. So inventorying your pantry, even your non-food items is super important to track where they are, make sure everything's all put together that, you know, is like, make sure that you know what your numbers are so that you don't order trash bags unnecessarily. By having a non-food pantry, you can help yourself and your family better navigate emergencies and disasters with a little more comfort. Where do I start? Simple. Grab a piece of paper and a pen. Let's make a list. Of course I have a list. I have a starter list, okay? So first aid supplies. You should have a first aid kit that is stocked with essentials such as band-aids, antibiotic ointment, pain relievers. Very important. Batteries. If you use things with batteries, I don't know anybody who doesn't, having extra batteries on hand is a great thing. Rechargeable, if at all possible. Rechargeable batteries are very helpful. Flashlights. You should have one flashlight for every single person in your household. I kind of exceed that. We have probably three flashlights per person in this household, and I'm betting there's more that I haven't seen. So different shapes, different sizes, different batteries, different wattage use, different, different whatever. Have them. They're important. They're very important. Be creative. Number one, be creative, okay? There are many ways to stock a non-food pantry. Get creative and think outside the box. For example, you could collect used eyeglasses, hearing aids, or other medical supplies. You could also collect gift cards to local businesses. Those are all very helpful. Check the expiration dates on those, okay? Now, we have I have a bin here of all of our old glasses. Eventually, um, I will end up donating a bunch of those to the Lions Club, but they have the old cheaters in there. They have the old frames in there. I know I, there was a pair of glasses. I really loved the frames. So I had them reuse the frames. It didn't save me money at all. Uh, but I love the frames. And so it worked for me. So I always just toss them in there because in case of emergency, something's better than nothing. With a non-food pantry, you want to remember the same thing. Rotate your stock. Okay. Because it really does matter. Even with non-food items, you want to make sure to use the oldest first with everything that you're doing. Do I think that toilet paper ages? Not necessarily, okay? But when it comes to things like detergents, soaps, toothpaste, you know, that kind of stuff, um, yes, you can go past the best buy date, um, but, mm, you know, after a while, it just won't work. And then there's also things like over-the-counter medications. Um, those best buy slash expiration dates, I give a little more attention to because, as they age, they become less efficient, less productive. Um, they will do less of what you need them to do in an emergency. A non-food pantry is an essential part of your pantry. To me, this is all the same thing. It's, it's all one big pantry. This just happens to be the quadrant where I keep all of the non-food items. You want to make sure that any chemicals, that kind of thing, are stored away from your food. That's very important. I always go high with the paper products. I go low with the other stuff. Liquids I prefer to go low with. Um, Ziploc bags. I use a ton of those during hunting season. So Ziploc bags, you know, what, whatever, whatever coffee filters. The world would end if I ran out of coffee filters. So there's a whole bunch of different things up here that just make our life a little easier and I know that I don't have to panic if I'm running out, that I've got backup to my backup to my backup, and you can too. What kind of non-food items can you suggest? 
for your pantry. Throw them in the comment section down below to inspire other members of this audience. And you can check out this video here, which is when I did my $1,000 Sam's Club haul. Until next time, be safe.